you are about to receive messages that may be harmful to your mental state. Your sense of reality will be questioned. Your view on things will be altered. You are now part of the meta. The meta controls everything. The meta determines what will and will not happen. You are watching the meta show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Meta Show. Today is October the 10th, 2020. I'm your host, Bruce Grubal. I am joined by your host, Merkelchen, your host, Anominate, and your host, Asher, who is not here today. The Matani. He's on vacation. And you guys should have known that he's on vacation because on the day of the days of this week, of Tuesday with all the fighting, and Freddie is here too, there were no pings from the Matani. That should tell you something. So this week, Matani free. I am wearing the black shirt for Matani today. So that should tell you guys something. We're ready to go. Hi, guys. What's going on? How's everything? Yo. Welcome to the show. It's good to anything, see you all back. Anything cool happened this week? Anybody got anything? It's kind of know, boring, I think. I think. There wasn't a lot that happened, I don't think, right? I mean, this was just a... a re- I mean, Asher was crowned the king of Nullsec this week. I guess that was cool. You know, he's got his little crown on. He's got a you know box of of pretzels of Kirkland oh, uh, no, peanut there, butter there stuffed was, pretzels. The, he's ready like, to go. There, there was the big thing that uh, happened to me on Tuesday. Um, I had a root canal done on Tuesday. You had a oh. root canal done? Did it take fourteen yeah. hours? A seven hour show <laughs> on that. Because <laughs> mine did. Mine took forty five minutes. Oh dear lord! Are you all right? It's oh, not yeah. too bad. Yeah, totally all right. fine. All right, good. All right, so obviously we are we are teasing a little bit here because this this week saw the biggest fight in the history of Eve Online, and we were all there. Isn't that cool? Well, I guess not. Well, Nam, did you make it? I'm sure you made it in at some point, right? Oh, I was there. Like they, all right. the uh, I had taken the day off work, so I was there for most of it. He had the root canal in between volleys. Yeah, I'm sure, exactly. I'm sure he could have like warped in, got the root canal, come back, and still been in the same place. It would have been fine. You know, there you go. So, all right, gentlemen, let's, let's, uh, we're, we're going to go over basically, we got a couple things to talk about today. We're going to talk about, obviously, the fight in FWST TAC. We're going to talk about some changes that are coming. I think Frank is going to stop by a little bit later. Um, but we have, we have a ton of stuff to talk about because, I mean, th- th- it's, it's very rare, at least in this war, where we get fights that are of, of the size and the scale and the scope of what we had on Tuesday. And that was even that was the second fight in a row because we also had a thing Monday. So Asher, can you walk us through what this week looked like from you as Mister FC guy and what you had to deal with this week? Because mm. I, th- I would like to know. So, th- this crown that I got was was that voted or did I just take it through force? I don't know. Like no one's actually told me. It was me. acclamation. No oh, acclamation. After I see. Through acclamation, you are now the king. <laughs> I'll be heading over to the palace at Westminster. I'm sur- certain soon. To be coronated. Um, we could name a Keepstar that, just throwing that out there. Um, so, yeah, two Keepstars in uh, in two days. Um, we caught one on the drop. That was that was pretty lucky, but uh, we, we were able to blow it up in uh, in a modest time of five hours. Uh, five hours, very, very quick Keepstar destruction. We basically got the first 50% free on that. So we got 50% of the first Keepstar in 20 minutes and then we had the next uh 50 took you know four hours and in and, and 40 minutes uh which set the table for the uh which set the table for the next keep star they dropped that second keep star like a couple hours after we killed the first one i think they thought that was like a backbreaker i think they thought that was the end of uh our morale and um i think yeah, they they have a lot of propaganda about how we're going to like we're going to lose thirty percent of our members, that we're just crabs, that we are you know waiting to be kicked in the rotten pumpkin, and I think that they were probably very surprised at the fight we put up. I don't think and I don't that, think they expected it. But that's the thing. Like that's one of the things I had to laugh about because I can tell, and I think you guys can probably tell as well, when Horde and the rest of the guys are getting a little upset with themselves. And that is when the front page of our Eve is flooded 
with fr- with fucking propaganda. And after we killed that first Keep Star, and then they dropped the second one, it was like Phew! this massive wave of of bitching and griping and oh well already replaced. Look, we dropped another one. Ha 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 type stuff. And that told me that they were really kind of mad that we were uh, even contesting the first one. I wouldn't say they were mad. No, I don't. I'm sorry. I just talk about nominee. I would just yeah, simply go ahead. say, I don't think they were mad. I think that they believed that that was the backbreaker. They thought yeah. they thought that was the trump card. So that's why they played it up so much. But that's that's never that's not a good way to fight Gunswarm. Um, like historically, all of our biggest wins have come after one of those events have happened where some big fight happened, it was either a brutal grind or a terrible loss, and a few days later, another thing happens, and the people we're fighting, they think, all right, well, goons aren't going to throw in here, so we're going to go hidden heavy and just, like, whatever, push them over. That's where goons throw in the hardest. Like, um, BTAC-R, two days before BTAC-R, we lost, like, 500 dreadnoughts. Yeah, yeah. Like, it was a huge, huge loss. And R.I.P. So, Omega Fleet. Right, and so when, and so when BTAC R happened, you know Manny was pretty confident about like just overwhelming us on capitals because of the loss that had just happened, but that's not how goons work. The way goons yeah. work is, holy shit, we just lost a lot of dreadnoughts. You now have every other dread pilot in the alliance waking up, because now it's their turn to get in and lose their dreadnought. Well, we've we've lost pretty much all our dreads in the alliance, so that is one thing we'll have to rebuild them over the coming uh... weeks and months. You know. But, I don't know, uh, like the, uh, as it seems like every time we started to get low on Dreadnoughts, people were logging new ones in just as fast as we could throw them away. I just and think, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm I sorry. I have one left. We, we have lost all the Dreadnoughts. Yeah, no I'm one. sorry, we have no we more have, We have no more Dreads. <laughs> we have no more ships whatsoever. 1DQ has been completely evacuated of all <laughs> ships. We don't know what we're going to do. I think that, like, there, there's oh, a... Yes. You know how Mittens is really big on messaging, right? Like he he thinks a lot about about messaging. Um, I I think like that they have not fully thought this through, and the reason I think that is because they they told their guys like, um, oh, we're not going to have to fight on the keep stars. We're going to shoot the keep stars while they're AFK, right? Like while while they're in 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 you know who knows in, in NPC Delve or in or running away to Iridia or whatever it is that they told their guys. And then like, when you see that that's not actually true, there's like, it, 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 that's like a dissonance thing, right? Like they're like, well, wait a minute, this is not the messaging I received. Like, and, and it's really important. I think like for, for anyone who is leading a core porn alliance or whatever, I think that you have to have messaging that rings true. Now, does that mean you don't put your best spin on it? No, you mean you, 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 you show your best, your best side, but it needs to be something that is accurate. You don't right. want your guys saying, well, you told me this one thing and then you come out here and then it's clearly not the case. Um, right. and, and I thought that's, and I think yeah. that's why, that's why I keep saying this. I think that's why they thought the second keep was a backbreaker. I think they thought that, that, you know, we had thrown our one big fight and then now it's over. Like, that's what I think they keep waiting a, for. Uh, I think this is a test thing because you see it with test. And you don't see it with the rest. It's it's not just a question of like everyone who's not goons. It's test kind of specifically. But the way good propaganda works is you take the facts and you frame a narrative that fits those facts. Like it's pretty straightforward. Right. But and like Horde does this, PL does this, NC Dot does this. Test takes a different approach. Test takes the approach where like we write a fan fiction about the way we wish the world was. We have a narrative. If we repeat it enough, it <laughs> yeah. will become true. It's, it's like we have a narrative, and now the facts, these are the facts. Like, you know, right. yeah, yeah, no, I, I hadn't thought about it, but um, it is it is weird. Like, you have, you have Horde, especially when I think about Horde. They've just sort of wholesale copied goons, like, in many ways, the way they, they run their alliance. They're sort of goons with a different name, right? Um, because a lot of what they do, a lot of how Gobbins runs it, is, is is essentially he just takes best practices from goons, and and, and you know even their their logo you know is uh, it, it's a it's a bees sort of, and beans. There yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah, new beans. Like he, he wanted to say new bees. Like we have new bees. Yeah, new beans. Like it's just all this stuff is just best practices from goons with a new label, and it's working really well. By the way, like he's grown it into yeah. probably the second biggest uh, alliance in the game. 
just well, by I mean, doing that. I mean, that's, I mean, to be honest, you got you guys got to keep in mind, and, and this is something that I've been, I've been saying for a while now, and I'll keep repeating it because it's true. This war is about Horde versus the Imperium. Tess shows up every once in a while. Like today was a perfect exa- Today was a perfect example of what Tess does. There was a a skirmish in SVM earlier today. SVM is one of the uh, regional gate systems into Delve. We have been fighting there for a while. There's a big timer tonight. We're all expecting on the iHub in there. We have this morning. There was a fight basically over the Sino Jammer that's in the system. If you look at the numbers and everything, Horde comes in. They've got 350, 360 some guys. They bring NC Dot. They bring Fraternity. They've got their crew. They come in. They're fighting on the thing. They think everything's going to be great. And then goons come in with solid numbers. And it comes in behind them. We start fighting. We start fighting. We start fighting. Then all of a sudden, a wild test fleet appears, ends up in the wrong place, gets completely blown to hell, and they all have to run away. And the result was the Sino Jammer online again. And this was a, it was an armor timer for the Sino Jammer. So that it repaired. They lost the fleet. They lost the, Is- for the first time lately, they lost the Isk War 2 to the point that they were, t- they were sending out battle reports before all of the kills came in so that it looked better on the, because it looked better for them on the battle report for a little while until they fed at the end. And I just had to laugh because this is one of those situations, this is the kind of thing where, these guys love to to crap on us and to give us a hard time test about bringing numbers and, and fight. You got you got us to fight, boys, and they are consistently late to everything with lower numbers than their allies. Their allies are the ones that are taking the bulk of the losses. They're the ones that are taking the bulk of the fights. They're the ones that are putting all their time. I mean, poor Killer B finally got to do his Titan fleet on Tuesday and sat there and he got to to, to have fun. But I mean, after a while. You know you're going to lose the objective. How much fun can that be? I mean, I feel bad. And from everything that I'm hearing from my friends who are in Horde, from my friends that have spies in Horde, the number they're getting really tired of it. The morale in in, in a Horde is not good because they're realizing that they're the ones doing all the fighting, and the test guys are kind of just coming in and taking all the credit. Because here's the, I mean here's the thing, Villy, the most dangerous place in New Eden is between Villy and a podcast. He is everywhere. <laughs> he will jump on there, and he will come on to every show he possibly can, talking in stage. I mean, if the show has 10 viewers, he will find a way to get on that show. Listen, that All man's right? going to get a Wikipedia article. There's just no way around it. That's, how, he, he, that's, what that's what he wants. That's what he wants. You, 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 you never see anybody from Horde leadership on any of these shows. Gobbins doesn't do shows, period. You never see them. Nobody other than who – else, who else in Horde leadership do you guys know? There is nobody. I mean, you know some of the FCs, you know, like Alpha Star, but he's not. He's away from keyboard right now, so he's not playing. Who else in Horde do we t- comes on any of these shows? Nobody. NC Dot. Yeah. You get no, Redline, yeah. but he's. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's Redline. I mean, he's not. I mean, Redline doesn't really sh- FC for them actively anymore, as right? much or at least nearly as much as he used to. So like, what do you, you got? You got from NC Dot all the leadership. Vince never see Vince on shows. He hasn't been on shows in years. Lady Scarlet doesn't do shows. On, on, on PL, Headliner will do a show or two. You'll see him every once in a while, but he's not out there memeing. He's he's typically just there to say hi and talk about stuff. So who else is doing shows from, from the PanFam side? Nobody. But you look at Test and, and all the rest of those guys, those guys, they will do anything they possibly can other than maybe you know, like making their own show, which they haven't done yet. They'd rather go on everybody else's. But that's what, so I feel bad for the Horde guys because you got to like we're doing all the work, but who's getting the credit for doing the work? Ron and Billy and Pro God and the rest of these guys that have shows or go on shows all the time. So I just I I have to I feel bad I really feel bad. My reason the I mean, Horde, Horde is just, doing great, but I, yeah, know, my, they're not my getting credit. I don't think that they're like they're really too too frustrated by that particular thing. I think it's um, I think that you know they, I think they probably just have a they have like a different ethos, but I think that um. If in you know if things start going bad, they'll go bad fast. You know, and and I think you've already seen that a little bit with these particular fights. That you know, there there isn't sort of the cohesiveness when you have this many alliances together. Um, you have uh, it's very hard to be cohesive. Whereas we have um, we have a much higher level, uh, um, you know, in Imperium 
than they do. So it, it's it's uh, it's easier to take losses and still come back from it, uh, you know, at full strength or even at ninety five percent strength, which is funny. You know, that's what you need to do. The other thing that I think is funny, and this is just uh, this is just me laying it on a little thicker because I'm I'm in a good mood today. Can we get one fucking name for this coalition these guys have put forward? I mean, really? Just call like, me. I, I, but th- they don't even call themselves that. I've been, I've been trying to watch, been trying to do, figure out what to call these guys. We, we did 14 hours of commentary, and I want to I say thank to Ban and Sven and Dirk Statil and Dawn, who, were all, who was on there with us for a while. We did 14 freaking hours of commentary during this fight on Tuesday. The longest I've ever talked for a, a, a consistent amount of time. It was pretty solid. And the thing is, every time we start, every time I would start to show, you're, you're watching the Imperium News Network coverage of the fight in FWST Tech between the Imperium and what the hell do you call these guys? Is, is it Pappy? Is it the Anaconda Coalition? Apparently, you're not allowed to call it Anaconda Coalition anymore. You call it that. And people will yell at you, including the guys that came up with the term. They don't want it used on their shows anymore. We call it the Snet Coalition as a joke from Anaconda. Then you've got you've got Blue Donut Coalition. You've got Pappy, whatever the fuck that is. Uh, and then and then my favorite, my personal favorite, is Merck's Merck's name, which is the Chucklefuck Coalition. You know, I was reading the CFC a, uh, a book the other day about uh, early. Mesopotamian uh, space guilds uh, in <laughs> video games, and the the whole thing it kind of it it became sort of an analogy for where we find ourselves these days. Um, we're like we're that I I can't quantify it. I don't know if we're just huge pussies or very very <laughs> huge pussies for not like just willingly throwing ourselves at these guys sort of the way that they want us to. So I, I think maybe something that we could consider just to up everybody's fun per hour, because that's what matters after all, is just that everyone on the other side of this thing is having a good time. I hope you're having a good time. Um, we'll try to do a little bit better in, as far as the annoyance quotient in how we're destroying your keep stars. And maybe you could extend us that same courtesy one day when you find your little danglers and come give it a try yourself. I had this like this sort of mental image of like three like three bullies coming up to one dude, and then like donning their armor and their chain mail, right? And then <laughs> and then be like, hey, why won't you fight us, bro? Hey, bro, why won't you fight us when we're wearing our armor and our Come chain on. mail? <laughs> like it just it's it's a really weird like argument that they're having. Like, hey, why don't you drop titans on our keep star? Uh, well, you're invading us. Well, why don't you drop them? <laughs> um, it, it, it's like. There's a there's a really small group of FCs in this game who have jumped in like a super fleet to like a, a roughly even number situation. Um, there's a slightly larger group that have jumped in to like a where they've had an a, you know an advantage, but uh, this group hasn't even really done that so far. So um, who's on the list of FCs that have been willing to jump into a fight that is almost even? For super in capitals, super, super yeah, capitals, super capitals. Four of them. Four. Um, you got X forty seven. UALX. Who who was the one who called? I don't know who called UALX, but it was probably someone from Pandemic Legion or maybe Northern Coalition. Uh, Elo Knights done it, and Lazarus Tall Raven. So that's the four I can come up with off the top of my head. I, uh, I would. Di- I have to disagree with you about the uh, X forty seven because it was while the numbers were even the uh, the tethering bug made it very much not an even fight oh they had an advantage but like it, yeah huge advantage yeah but still i mean um so yeah the, but i can't i can't think of any other fcs who have who have jumped in uh in those situations i don't can someone tell me who ualx was i'm actually i i would like to give them credit i just don't know who made that who made the call uh for ualx i i guess it would have been killer b i would have thought but I don't know. I'm not sure who was running their stuff. It should, it should have been B, right? I mean, at that point, he was back. I think it was B, but I might be yeah. wrong. I don't yeah. know. It, if you remember who it is, tell us in the chat. But I think it was B. Um, yeah, so there's a, there, there's a small list of people who have done that. It's a, it's a very exclusive. Uh, it's like the EGOT of, uh, 
of EVE Online. Um, and I think that will, uh, I don't know, I think I think this this whole, like, why won't you use Titans on our Keepstar when we have every advantage and we outnumber you is the weirdest narrative I've heard um, overall. Someone told me Doom Chinchilla was actually the one who called that. So Doom? That'd be, yeah. I, I might have found that. That's possible. It, yeah. It, um, it wasn't that long ago that, um, I mean, it still is, but the... You know, everybody is arguing, well, the big problem with Eve is it's always N plus one, N plus one. Whoever has the bigger blob wins. And people have been complaining about that forever. And after this week, we now have people who are complaining, well, we brought a much bigger blob. We did not win. That's right? not fair. No, we deserve to win. We, like, we, we, well, well, what we, the hell? I don't did get you it. Hear, did you and hear it's us? the same like, people. Did you hear the clip where, where we were compared to using tactics that you could uh, try? Uh, teach a golden retriever yeah i, 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 I so I, for I, you the guys who are asking i think frank has all of those clips ready to go oh, for fantastic. when he comes to visit and you guys I would can, can hear it again i would love some green propaganda where we're portrayed as maybe a golden retriever with little fat bee wings like that would be <laughs> if someone could get on that i <laughs> would love to be true you got it you yeah. heard that golden retriever with fat bee wings we gotta yeah. do it but that's i mean but that's the thing like this is what i think is funny we fought out numbered this entire war and that's the joke Goons are blobbers. Well, we're being blobbed now. So what we've had to do is what Asher did on Monday and what he did on Tuesday, which is develop creative ways to get around the fact that these guys are going to have their supers ready to go. They're going to have their titans ready to go. And they're going to have more guys in subcaps than we do too. So how do we how do we win this thing? And I'll tell you, it's funny. Like I've heard, I remember so many times hearing folks on the other side, regardless of who it is, say things like, there's no way to defend a keep star. They're always going to die. And then like a week later, you hear the opposite. Oh, they're too tough. There's no way anybody's going to be able to kill a keep star again. And now we're back to, oh, anybody can kill a keep star. If yeah. you kill it, throw enough stuff at I, I it. Think you, I think you've had a good point there, Brisk. If if it is so easy to ref a keep star, um, when you have a certain number of people, they have that certain number of people times three. Right. Like if if that's the case, then it should be very easy to do. Well, uh, I mean, yeah. To to be serious, like one, it's the issue is that you you can kill a given sufficient ships, a keep star will die as long as you're willing to pay the cost to kill that keep star. And this is actually where you get into the difference between Goon Swarm and like Legacy. And I was that. about to say that. So we're willing to pay that cost. We're willing to say to take a massive isk loss to kill a keep star. Um, I mean, this is one of the things that people. I think it was Villy who actually used this as one of his justifications for wars. Well, you know, the goons they used to crash their ships into a superior force just to get kills, and or you know just to win. And like, well, same goon swarm, same <laughs> same tactic. And, and that's Guys, and that's the thing. That's Billy's what makes me laugh so much because it's like. We, you, we, we, goons were known as the guy, will, they'll throw a thousand thrashers into a fight just to say they did it. And, oh, we miss that goons. They don't do that anymore. So we throw 3,000 freaking ratting ships at this keep star to kill it. And, oh, now we're poor. That's the joke. I just, it's just I funny. A, did, didn't you know that Billy's been on our side all along? He's just helping right. us That's rediscover what, our I, true I, I, self. I can forget. Exactly. Exactly. I, I have this pet peeve. Like, <laughs> when I find myself unfortunate enough to be leading a fleet. Like my first pet peeve is don't talk about the fucking weather. I can't stand that. The second one is you got weather over there, nom nom. Y'all got weather where y'all live. Um, th my second one is like when we tackle like a Rorkel, for instance, we're in someone's ratting space. We show up unannounced with 150 tort bombers and Kiki Moros, and then the people that we're dropping on will respond appropriately. They'll drop supers and shit like that and faxes on us. And as we're like trying to scurry away, like, hee hee, let's get out of here quick. Like <laughs> inevitably someone in our fleet is always like, fucking pussies, couldn't take it. And it's like, dude, we <laughs> jumped on a ratting ship with right. 150 people right. on an ounce. You're talking like, shit after they ran off because we had twice their numbers. Like, maybe yeah, not, so maybe like, they'll do that. This, this war is that just personified. You have a situation where on a tame fight, the Imperium is outnumbered three to one. And somehow the way that we're defending ourselves is infuriating to the people that are attacking us, right? So 
if if I were just John Smith on the line over there, I would be sitting there and kind of think the same thing. Like, dude, we outnumber them in every appreciable way, shape, and form. We've dropped a ring of keep stars around their space. We've been sieging them now for months on end. And yet here these pricks are just shoving it at us as good as we can possibly take it. So I don't know. I don't know what kind of upward pressure there is right now in these various groups. I think the ones that don't have like a gigantic hate boner for the Imperium, which I would hope there's at least a couple of, find something else to do, dude. Because if you think this shit sucks, it's going to get worse. We've been like only dealing in the weird asher theoretical headspace of defense so far we haven't got to the real defensive strategy yet you're gonna fucking hate it so i, I would think <laughs> twice about logging into one of these things again because if you hated the goddamn myrmidons you're gonna hate what's coming next you know it's just gonna be worse well that, I, I have to I, say I come, man i want them to come i, I don't you know, no please. no i think they're coming i mean they're not gonna stop yeah, now at this point they feel like they think they think we, they got us on the ropes they're almost at delve these guys they can't possibly do that again uh, they don't have enough isk. Oh my God! You can't you can't have a trillion isk fight two days in a row. There's no way you you can't lose that much. In, you guys are going to be broke in a week. Okay. Look at the mer for the last few years and do the math. That, it, it was <laughs> Billy had the balls to say to me last night on open comms that look at the last look at the mer for the last two or three months. You guys went through all your all of the ore that you mined in the last two or three months, and I I didn't even say anything mainly because I couldn't get a word in edgewise because Dirk was drunk as shit last night. But it's like. <laughs> I want to be like, guys, look at the MER for the last two months. Look at it for the last three years. I mean, we were at the height in like June of 2018, June of 2019. Between that, those two periods, we were mining like something like seven or eight trillion isk a month. And that, that stuff was all being you know used. It's like, come on. Yeah, so it was every every open comms or seal. So... So, so the, the whole thing, like, I was just like, guys, we can, we can do a couple more of these fights. It's not a big deal. And one of my favorite stories, and I want to ask you guys if you guys had favorite stories from the Tuesday fight. My favorite story from the Tuesday fight was, and it was in our three-guide Raven uh, fleet that we used. That, that, this was our old doctrine that we put up, we, we created to kill Keep Stars back before the Boosh nerfs. It's what we used to kill the Keep Stars in uh, Hard Knocks uh, and Fort Knox. Their, their, their rage home system. We used it to kill an NC dot keep star and tribute too. So that's our, like our old long, long range keep star killing doctrine. And a lot of us had a bunch of ships left over. I had two Ravens and everybody had like two or three that we had been hoarding up for a while. So we had a bunch on Alliance contracts. Everybody hops in, we go in, we, we, we do our first little bit. Everybody starts losing them. We start picking up, we start picking up, uh, contracts we run out of contracts and everybody's like hey is there any ravens left in one dq everybody checks and there's nothing and that this was maybe two hours into the fight the guys went and put 200 ravens into the cooker they started building them at the start of the fight and about three hours before the end of the fight there were another 200 ravens up on contract we literally built the fleet that killed this keep star or that at least for in its side during the actual fight I just, that that just made me laugh. I thought it was hilarious, uh, but that's the kind of stuff that that these long fourteen hour fights they do. And Frank and and it's been confirmed. It was in Polygon. CCP has has posted. They po put it out in a couple of different places now. We did break the world record again on Tuesday. The world previous world record was sixty one forty two concurrent users in the space. That was a nine tac four in in twenty eighteen. That fight was nothing. We didn't really do anything. It wasn't a big deal. This fight was legit. 14 hours of solid fighting. Multiple trillions of ISK lost on both sides. And the result, well, together. I guess the, the bad guys didn't lose that much. But the the, the number was something like 6,500 concurrent users. There were like 8,800 8, people over the entire course of the fight were there. That's pretty solid. And I, and I have to say this, and I want to make, because we, we haven't really talked about it very much thank you ccp the servers worked they stayed up the nodes worked the bounty system at least the calls that you could see were turned yeah. off so it wasn't a big I deal to throw that out there yeah things worked the way they were supposed to work in 10 percent tie-dye or in less than that you could modules were firing pds's were working smart bombs were working 
bombs themselves were, were AOE damage was working. The server never crashed. There weren't any mass disconnect. I guess there was one fleet that got disconnected. I think uh, that was what I had heard. But other than that, the server worked the way it was supposed to. So thank you, CCP, for giving us the, the toys to play this game for 14 hours on a Tuesday. Yeah, that was really impressive. And like, we are so used to complaining about the lag and about... But, I mean, they had 6,000 players on the grid all shooting each other, and it was slow. That was the worst part of it. Everything everything behaved more or less the way it should. I, I have never... I have been in fights with a thousand people where that wasn't the case. I'm not, well, go back far enough. I've been in fights with 50 people where that wasn't, where we couldn't get that. Right. Yeah. I, I've been in fights much smaller than that, that were, were much worse. Um, uh, so a lot of credit to them for it working. Um, I, 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 I'm, I, the only concern I have is like if both sides are fielding carriers like that, I think that's going to add a lot of, a lot of load to it, but um, you know, uh, still a lot of credit to them for it running well as it did. So I, I saw a couple of mention of mentions of uh, BTAC R in chat, and like the the actual in local numbers of BTAC R were relatively low. Because, we kept our fleets out of system. Uh, Do you remember that? That's right, exactly, and that's so that's actually what's kind of going wrong from the legacy perspective here because they are piling everything that they can into every fight that they can. And so they're like they're automatically forcing there to be all of this extra lag, where if you look at like um, X forty seven in X forty seven, we dropped in our super capitals, our cap, our dreads, um, a small number of sub caps. Almost everything was held in reserve to keep the numbers in system down to keep the lag down. BTAC R was the same way. The only people who were the only ships going into BTAC R uh, were super capitals, capitals, and dictors. Uh, guys, I need and to then, like, interrupt this in, for an important informational yeah. thing. Uh, I'm watching the Texas Oklahoma game. Do you guys know that the University of Texas has a kicker named Dicker? They've got Dicker the kicker. <laughs> Dicker the kicker. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. I just found this out. I'm I'm really impressed. I didn't know this information until just now. <laughs> it sounds like destiny. Yeah, it's like <laughs> I know what I'm going to be when I grow up. <laughs> Dicker, I hardly know her. <laughs> hey, Mark, did you have any good times. stories from the fight from Tuesday? Anything funny? Yeah, I have a good story from the fight. So I want to hear this for. I want to hear this for. It gets sort of sketchy, like when you're a space paper pusher. Like I know the FCs have a really hard time, like actually doing magnificent things and making sure that we win. But when you're a paper pusher, I sort of sit behind the scenes and just harass everybody. Like, are you filling out your TPS reports for today? <laughs> Did you make sure to fill out the Google Doc for what you're doing right now? And like, I, behind the scenes, doing a lot of pings. Um, just sort of trying to keep everything organized and, and the lanes of progress unclogged, so to speak. So as it's going along, I, you know me well enough, Brisk, we're dear friends. I have a refrigerator, all of maybe 90 one, inches. One feet away. I'm standing right like I could, boom, done, resupply. So as it's going on, I'm having a couple big waves, just chilling out, taking it easy. I notice towards the end that I'm getting more and more flamboyant with the pings and aggressive and it's getting, turning into more and more of a shit show. And finally, I went back to the refrigerator. I had just bought a 12 pack that afternoon and there were no beers left. And, and the first thing that popped in my <laughs> oh, mind no. was who stole my beer? Like who was down here and stole my beer while this was going on? And then I realized we've been at this for 10 hours. So really I've been pacing myself having a beer every hour or so, but it was a rough night because I did have to work the next day. And I don't know. It's just, it was one of those days where I, ha I was going to make it a half day, make it a halfer. And I didn't even make it till about 10 AM. I'm just like, yeah, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. We're going to work remote today, remote from the bedroom. So yeah, that was my experience for most of the day. I was out. That was hard. I, the I was day was along, hard. chugging along in my little drone boat, you know, just doing, doing my thing. Um, having a nice time. Uh, it was pretty cool because I thought I lived through the thing in my little gnosis and docked it up, was all finished up. And then the next day when I woke up, there was a kill mail for it. So I must have died and didn't realize it. I was too drunk. Amazing. That's yeah. a good story. Yeah, thank you. Now, did you have any stories from the fight besides the root canal, obviously? Um, I don't know. Nothing too good. It was mostly a matter of not being able to get my dreadnought killed. <laughs> 
Well, that, that was... All right, so, Asher, let me ask you this, because this is something I was wondering about. They were trying to waterboard the dreads on the Fortazar, I want to say, like, halfway through the fight. Mm-hmm. Why do you think they waited that long to try to hit, to stop the dreads from warping in? I didn't, that didn't seem to make a lot of sense to me. I they don't want to fight, they didn't want to fight in two grids. Like, I mean, I think that, okay. that, that, that's my guess is they did not want to fight on two, two grids. Um, I mean, it didn't really work that well. So I, I guess, I guess it probably was the right call on their part. Cause... If you can't win on one, I would not advise fighting on two. Uh, but I, what <laughs> right, do I know? I'm just a space secretary. I don't, I don't think that like a lot of people were bringing that up, but the, um, yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe it could have worked. Uh, we, we it did unpause, but I don't, I don't think it was related to that in particular. Uh, talk about some cardiac arrest moments. That, well, that now, now, so can you yeah, tell us about that? To... So, like around hour eight or nine, the Keep Star unpaused for like two minutes, and everybody started freaking out. And obviously, uh, we were doing the INN stream. I had walked away to go do the dishes for my wife, so I would not be in trouble for being on a on a on a stream for fourteen hours. And then I came back and I saw that that crap oh my god the the, the thing had been on pause for like two and a half it minutes. was it what was happened three minutes. how did that happen yeah. what happened we just that was for dramatic effect honestly <laughs> right there you go nothing exactly. behind there you that go. at all it was just a conscientious effort shut your guns off for a minute and watch these fucking fools think they got this in the bag <laughs> when uh crush them it was funny because i'll tell you all the all of the, i went back and watched it again because i wanted to see that time because i wasn't physically present at the keyboard to see that and watching all the Horde guys like, rip. Oh, look, you guys are screwed. Oh, this is great. Blah, blah, blah. Goon sucked in all that kind of shit. And then as soon as it paused again, dead silence from all those people. And you didn't see them chat again. It, it's all an excellent example of, you know, don't count your don't count your chickens until they hatch. When, exactly. we, when we were at 2%, Jay suggested, you guys want to let it unpause uh, for one more time, <laughs> then pick it up at like uh, 10 seconds just to give them some false hope. And that really wasn't that well received at that point. It wasn't, you know, <laughs> <laughs> no one particularly liked that. So, Asher, one of the other things that I was wondering, and we were I was talking about this last night. So, at what point did you guys decide, all right, this is all in. We have done, we have fought on this long enough. We've committed enough. We are 40%. committed that 40%. we got to stay. Yeah, uh, forty percent. Forty percent. Okay. I said this thing's gonna die. Like, um, th th doesn't matter what it takes, it'll die. Um, so when when we hit that, um, uh, you know, around around seventy five, I, I I considered, you know, should we should we pack it up and, you know, is 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 it is it worth it to uh, to finish it? But you know, I I sort of threw that out there for everyone to consider. And uh, pretty much everyone was like, no, we need to we need to blow this thing up. And and um, I think I, I I'm sort of relishing or not relishing. I, I was more OK with them angry at Keepstar in our space because I thought it would accelerate their plans. We could fight more. Um, but uh, I think there's like a ton of value to uh, obviously you've seen it. You've seen the value of blowing it up. Uh, our guys were are just so amped about it. So um yeah, so at forty percent, we just said, you know, whatever the cost at this point, it will blow up. And I thought, you know, I think you're exactly right. If you know, when I when I look through comms and I see our guys, I see your guys. Uh, everybody's just excited as hell, and that they're just that's the kind of Eve moment that we play this game for. You know, the folks that can say they were there, they were in this giant fight, and it doesn't matter what side you're on. If you're on the other side, you got to watch us feed a trillion s worth of dreads in, you know. In the span of twelve hours, you're you're all excited. You, many of these guys, frankly, got the got to use their doomsdays on their titan for the first time in anger ever. So they're all excited about that and happy about that. We're excited because we won the objective, and we did it in the most absurdly funny way possible, in my opinion. And it's like ratting ships. That's just that's just genius. It's just amazing to to do that. I love it. It just makes me laugh so much that uh, you know we're able to to put that kind of a you know. The, the joke that goons are crabs to use. Well, okay, yeah, we're crabs. Here you go. Here's all our ratting shits. We just killed your Keepstar. Uh, that made me laugh. But I I have to, I want to ask you this, Asher, because you, you, you deal with Villy, you deal with the other FCs. Is there anybody on the other side who thinks you think would have made the same call as we did and said, you know what, we're going to kill this thing. It doesn't matter what it takes and push all our chips in on the table. Do you think any of them would be willing to do that? Mm -hmm. Um... 
It's a good question. I, I don't know for sure. Um, I want you to spend some time crafting this insult, please. Like, really? Take- I, I, I'm not really looking to, to throw any shade at anyone in particular. Like, like it's hard to say who would have done what, you know, given, you know, given that time. Um, I could see KB doing it. Killer B could do it. Yeah, I could see him. He's the kind of guy who would, would be willing to, to, to have that kind of fight if he thought it was the right kind of fight and it, it, you know, would he be allowed to, I don't know, but I think I could see killer B doing it. No, I, I could never see Billy, uh, PGL PGL is the kind of guy who would also do that. You know, he, he would, uh, he, he's the kind of guy who, who is like, you know, damn the torpedoes full speed ahead kind of dude. So those are the, those are the kind of guys I can see doing it, but those are not the guys who are running this invasion, right? They're, they're not the people who would get to make that choice. Okay, cool. I can keep talking if uh, that's what we're looking. <laughs> Please keep talking because I'm doing stuff in the background. I'm getting ready. <laughs> I'm getting so, ready because yeah. Frank is going to be here soon, so I'm getting that ready. Was super for, uh, upsetting for me, for right? So I, we run a we run a clean ship here, guys. Come yeah, on. yeah. Merkelton has been trying to psych everyone out all day. Like he's just on a, he's just being being really, 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 uh, you know, petty. I would say is is the best way to describe. <laughs> it. And, and I'm I'm sure that after the show's over, he's gonna he's gonna start. Hey, all right, team, we. We tried our best. We had some awkward pauses. I will uh, mention the great legendary awkward pause of 2043. The legendary <laughs> eight seconds of silence. <laughs> uh, always be filling, right, Mark? Always be filling. Yeah. You know, I, this is what I was thinking about. Um, after it was over, it was like a cleansing experience. You get really glad. You know, the, the hype pings go out. Everybody's like, hell yeah, we did it. High five. You know, like super cool. It was a pain in the ass. The folks that were there at the beginning, I mean, most of them have a a two gallon piss jug sitting next to them by the end. I can't even imagine the aftermath for the euros that showed up for that one that rode it all the way to the end. And there were a lot of them that did. I'm sort of curious on the other side where, where everybody's mind is going to be at when something like that is over. We intercepted a couple pieces of communication that made it even more fulfilling for us um, but just as, you know, random Munin pilot or whatever, who's just sitting there trying to plink away at Myrmidons that are inexplicably screaming past you at a ridiculous, at ludicrous speed. Um, I wonder is waking up and looking at your killboard the next day and being like, Hey, shit, man, I shot 30 different dudes last night. It took 14 hours and we lost to keep star, but I'm feeling really good about my decisions last night. You know, I just wonder if that's, that's sort of uh, the mentality that the average person has. I know the FCs, when one of these things is over, you're just dead, completely dead to the world. It's such a hard experience, but for the member, I'm curious where the fun factor is for everybody right now, you know? That's a good question, but I think I think actually, I think Frank wants to talk about that. So, are you guys ready for a real war update? Yeah, sure. is it ready? Yeah, war update. Time? I want the honest right. truth. Is what I'm looking for. All right, let's get let's get the honest truth. Let's get Fountain Frank in here, and we'll have a we'll have a little bit of a war update here. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Fountain Frank. We are here for the War Update part of the Meta Show. I want to thank all of you guys for letting me back. I appreciate it very much. Uh, you guys you guys did good this week. I'm kind of proud. Like, normally I would come in here thinking I had to, like, spin shit and everything, but I don't have to spin anything. This is just, this has been great. This is this is exactly what you want to hear. And, and, and I, I have to laugh. The first thing I want to point out is just, some people have asked, what what the Horn of Dugundor does, what what it is and what it sounds like and, and what the result has been. So before I get into talking about the big Keepstar fights, fights, let me uh, let me let me sound the Horn of Dugundor and, and talk about what's happened here, okay? So here we go. This is what happens when we sound the Horn of Dugundor. That's the Horn of Dugundor. And they come back. They come out of everywhere. They fly around. They go crazy, and look at this, look at this, look at this, look at these activity numbers coming out of our asses. Boom! Look at that! 
Look at those numbers. Goose Corp up 20% in the last 10 weeks. Two-week change, 23.68%. The numbers are off the chart. Why? Because of the Horn of Gundor. It has been sound. That's it. There you go. All right. So we're done with the Horn of Gundor. I want to talk about, I want to talk about, this is, this is, this is stuff that makes me laugh. Okay. So if you want to see the stages of grief where you start out with like anger and then you go into denial and then into acceptance and things like that, let me show you this. This is what Ron, the crayon eater sounded like the night of the fight. This is the, so this is the first thing that he said. This, this is, I just have to laugh about this. I'm going to show you guys the clips. Here we go. Here's the first one. This is, uh, this is the richest group on the server. Uh, they'll do anything to avoid a fucking fight. <laughs> love it, man. Love it. Is, the richest group on the server will do anything to avoid a fight. Except, you know, maybe throw 5,000 ships at your keep stars and kill them all. Hey, I don't think hey, we were Frank. avoiding a fight that night. Hey, what Frank. Uh, first yes, of what? I want to thank you for not spinning whatsoever. I came here Sorry. for the facts, and I only want the facts. That's, Second, that's fact. the, the volume levels on the video playback need a little tiny bit. If you I can't help the fact that Ron mumbles. He's a mumbler. I'm trying. You guys have to be quiet and listen. You got to listen closely. All right, next up. This is, this is the next one. This is the next one that makes me giggle. Talking about the numbers. Here, here we go. Here we go. The numbers. You know what they're doing? They're bringing the kind of gameplay that you could teach a fucking golden retriever to do in an afternoon. Like, Jesus Christ. Are you fucking kidding me? Dude, but they have five billion fucking titans. Go fuck yourself, dude. Like, bring it. We show up. We're ready to fight. Oh, we're outnumbered. Go fuck yourself. The that dude's not mad. He, he's nothing. not mad at all. You're you mad. You're the mad dog. one. He's he's not mad. Frank, we can't Frank, we can see your YouTube volume. It's turned way down. I can't help the fact that I, I don't know how to turn it up. Listen, I don't know computers. All I do is push buttons. Listen, Golden Retriever. This is it. Welcome to the goons' newest SIG. Golden Retriever bees. This is our newest SIG. I am totally okay with being compared to a golden retriever. There you go. Everybody <laughs> loves golden retrievers. Yeah. Golden retriever bees. That's it. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you to Mini True for mocking that up during the show. We built, and it builds ravens during a fight. We can make funny graphics during a show. This is what it's like when you have a, a coalition that is not bullshit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's talk about that. So, hmm. What else? What else? We have other other streamers that were out on talking about the fight. Our, our, our dear friend, Adeline5, let's listen to him. This was him talking about morale yesterday. What was the moral like, morale like on your side during last... The morale, fight? not moral. It was rough. It was rough. We had FCs that were constantly trying to motivate people to keep going, to just keep pushing, man. It's a long fight. We had a lot of EU guys that were there the entire time. What was the moral of There you go. I don't think we had trouble getting people to do stuff. It was fun. Everybody was there. We're like, yeah, give me another ship. How many more ships can I get? Let me give me another ship. I feel bad for a guy like that. He's going to be like, he's going to be yelled at for being honest. And telling well, that, that's, the, I mean, that's the thing. I, I, I hope this guy doesn't get kicked from whatever group he's in that because he said something that was true. The best though was... The best one, and this one has been shared like a thousand to five thousand times, so you guys probably already seen this before, but it's still funny, and I wanted to give this guy credit. I don't know who's talking, but I love you, and you're my hero. Kill some. Keep the Keepstar. Keep the Keepstar. The Keepstar's already dead. That was yesterday. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, he died? Yeah, it's dead. Oh, he died? It's dead. So they got their mission again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why we is our it. coalition bullshit? Why is our coalition bullshit? Relax, relax. Some That's what it is. That's why. Why? I, I'll tell you why. Because your leadership is risk averse. They only want to take fights they know they can win, and they're not as cool as a fucking golden retriever bee. Okay? That's what I'm talking about. This bee right here is cooler than Villy. 
that poor bastard is basically in my mind. Do you remember the poor girl that was streaming the dock up your faction Titans? Like that's him. For right. This- I mean, oh, that, that's yeah. like, you're never going to live that sorry. down. Let us so, apologize. Neolithicus needs to make a song with why is our coalition bullshit? Well, because I, I, that's I, the best. That's we like were, the best. We were worrying about what to call them. Bullshit coalition seems like a perfect name for it. There you go. I'm. I. I have to say, I am partial to Chucklefuck Coalition because Merck came up with that and it's funny. But the it last thing, too. and and look, I, I'm sorry I can't turn this up because I don't know how to make anything work. Here is this is this is the the piece de resistance. This is the best clip that came out of this freaking fight, and it's just so fucking amazingly bad that I have to put it up here because it's just so funny. Uh, this is it. Dude, here's the thing. If we have 4,000 people, right, on grid, and you can't stop this bullshit uh, thing that they're doing, then the bullshit thing needs to get nerfed. Oh, my fucking God! Plain and simple, man. Plain and simple! If, if we can't bring N plus 1 to every fight... Nerf the shit out of the other guys. What are you gonna do? How you gonna how you gonna nerf a bunch of crazy people throwing a thousand ships at you every time because we feel like it? How you gonna nerf that? You know it would be awesome if maybe they started advocating to make keep stars much harder to kill. I can't see anything going wrong with that. I feel like you guys should probably play. That's that a great out. idea. Billy, there you go. There is your next line in the CSM. Keep stars are too easy to die. You have to make them harder. And you need to do it before the war ends. Like, maybe do it next week. How about that? That's a great idea. I, Mark, That you are you are a steely-eyed missile man. That is the smartest thing any person has ever said on the show. Listen, this war update, I got to tell you, I listen, I try to be nice. But all I can say is the chuckle fucks are unhappy. They're, they're sad. They don't, their coalition is bullshit. They're sad. They're angry. They're yelling at each at each other. Their FCs, their FCs have to they have to morale post constantly. Guys, it's going to be okay. You did a really good job. This is great. Keep logging in, please God, please God, don't stop logging in. Well, you, you left it's out. It's just goons getting started. Are, goons are morale pinging, even though we're not. <laughs> That's it. Like like you even like here's the thing like. I never sell a lie. I, I give you guys the straight, factual, spin-free information every week. These guys can't even keep their information straight for an hour. Like, they can't even go from the start of one Crying in Stations episode to the end without changing their perspective like four times. These guys change their narrative more often than they change their underwear. It's ridiculous. But that's it. That's that's the war update. That's what I got this week. So you guys all have fun. And I will see you next time. One last time. We're going to blow the horn of Goon Door one more time for everybody. If you're not paying attention, turn your sound up really loud, guys. Turn it up loud. There you go. You need the horn of Goon Door. Frank, thank you for your service. We appreciate it. <laughs> The only thing Fountain Frank can play at an appropriate volume is that terrible horn. <laughs> I've heard that Ron has like clipping disabled on his stream. Is that true? So people can't like, you know, call him out on what he says. Is that accurate? Or, or I don't no? know. Well, how did we get those last two? I thought those were really recent. I, I well, I know one of them was a streamable clip, so it's like someone had a screen recorder going right, mm-hmm. and and then just put it on streamable. I don't, but I don't know. Well, That's what someone so, told me. I don't know. True. I don't tw- um. I don't know, Twitch clips were, they're temporary anyways. So if you wanted to have like a long-term version of a Twitch clip, you need to record it somewhere else anyways. It's a good Twitch clip conversation we got going on. Yeah, here. Yeah, listen, let's get really into the technical weeds of this whole thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there are, there are clips on his page. Some of these clips, the streamable stuff, that was stuff other people had to find. Uh, Because I couldn't find it. I found a couple of of highlights on his stream. But, I mean, I'll be honest. Like, I I felt bad. I was laughing. We were were being told during the the 24, the 14-hour INN breaking news coverage of the fight in FWST Tech that they were banning random people for just saying things like Delve. Like, Delve was auto-modded out of the chat on Ron's stream. I guess people, he was tired of people saying it. 
or something. It just it just funny. What is it like delve by when or something? People were saying. I, and I then... guess I don't know, but it's it, like it just makes me laugh. I, I just but have I mean, to call out in chat the guy calling him Crayron. Um, <laughs> I, I very much like that. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Listen, when you it, it I, I'm glad you brought this up because I was reading a book about 1700s. Polynesian military strategy, and when you cannot win <laughs> the objective, win in by modding chat. Over mod your chat because that's, that's it. That's then it. They can't that's stop it. you. You're invincible. You, ha- um, you have to do it. You have to do it. I'll tell you. I, you know, I, I don't know. Just that fight. That fight was long and it was hard and it was a pain in the ass. But I think it was what a lot of us needed. Because if you're one of the vets that said, we, we called, you know, the Horn of Gundor comes out, and I know Mittens has said this before, but his biggest worry, his biggest concern was sounding that thing too early, getting in here, and then people coming back and being like, oh, well, you didn't really need us. This is bullshit. There's no real fighting going on. Finally getting a fight like that was probably the best morale boost we could have had. And I think, you know, killing those two keep stars back to back, regardless of what else happens in the war, that's going to be something that people will remember. I think that's good. they're going to say, I was there. That's going to be an I was there moment in EVE on both sides, which is good for the fight. It's good for the game. And I think that's that's a benefit that I think we all should be happy about was that this this fight was there. So I would like to say, on behalf of at least the Imperium, thank you, Fraternity, for dropping that Keepstar, both of them, since we know that it was you. It was yeah, very the, generous. Uh, like, the idea of the Horn of Gundor is many, many years old. Like, during the Casino War... We had it. We had we had already thought of it at this point. We'd already realized that that we had something we could do. We didn't do it because we didn't think it would actually help. And in retrospect, we were right. But you know, this time around, it, it's impressive how many um, like really old names we are seeing coming back. Um, like we're seeing people who played the last played the game five years ago. Last played the game ten years ago. Let's play the game 15 years ago. I mean, I've been in Goon Swarm since 2006. We have people coming back who were like the bitter vets when I joined Goon Swarm. It's amazing to see. And as far as the big fights, like the BTEC-R, the uh, X-47, the FWST, right now, right now people who care, people care who won or lost FWST. In five years... All anybody's going to care about is, I was there. That's what will matter. Exactly. Like, I can't that is I, why, I remember that is very why little of X-47, but I know I was there. I remember right. I was there. Right. And that's, that's the why kind of Eve thing that awesome. people remember. That describes, every, like, everything great about Eve is that these big events happen. And five, ten years later, you're st- you still, you still want to say, man, I was there. Pretty awesome stuff. All right, everybody, we have hit the end of our show. I want to give everybody a chance, because last time I didn't, and there was funny stuff that happened at the end. So do you have any final parting thoughts on Um, No, I think, I, was, I think I just gave them. All right, that was that was perfect. Mark, do you have any final thoughts for the for the crew? I do have final thoughts. Thank you. All right, let's go. I want, to, I want to hear that. There was a really good question in chat, and I feel like you missed it, and I assume it was a mistake. Uh, certainly, you would never ignore a question like this. Is Does Fountain Frank have an OnlyFans that you could link uh, for the audience? Just you know, for- I know that, that he has been working on that because he has a lot of feet pictures that apparently people all want to see, uh, but it's not ready yet. So when he's ready, I'll, I'll make sure you guys are all aware of it. Okay, cool. I I only brought it up because it's uh, that had never dawned on me before. But the fact that I do know you well enough to know that often what we see above the waist on the stream is very different than what exists below the waist. That is so absolutely correct. Business opportunity there. I don't. We could explore. I should probably ask your wife first because she may have a problem with that. But who knows? Uh, who knows? Listen, <laughs> it was a good time. It was a big week. It was taxing. It was crazy. A lot of shit happened. Thank you to everybody that showed up. Thank you to the FCs that that made it happen. Um, Chuckle fucks. We don't really care what you do next. Just you keep being you to like just gosh thank you for being you and we'll continue to be us and you've only got to grind through 180 of these fucking timers when you actually sack up and decide to do it and we'll be waiting you know so uh till next time asher the king of nullsec i 
Your Highness, do you have any uh, any final parting thoughts for us? I, I once again I asked us to do a serious and salubrious uh, meta show, and I am once again disappointed by all of you. Have a good day. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I have one thing to add. I just have to um, Antar, like, you know, I'm not going to make the same mistakes you did, but thank you for that thing that you did. <laughs> all right, that sounds that sounds interesting. All right, everybody, thank you all for joining us. This has been the Meta Show for October 10th, 2020. I am Brisker Ball. I'm joined by my co-host, Merkel Chan, Asher Elias, and Anominate. We've uh, had a good time having some fun here with you guys. We hope you all had fun this weekend, Eve. Pine Colognes, Delenda Est, and you stay classy, New Eden. <laughs>